On the breakfast show this morning, NLC and TUC disagree on protocol for planned strike. Tinubu seeks true partnership for Africa's development in UN address. And also, uh, we'll be looking at the headlines on the front pages of our national dailies on what we call Off the Press. Very good morning to you, and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on a Thursday morning. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. We are in it together to make our country better. We are in it together to make ourselves happier. We are in it together to make our world a better place. We do hope that you are crafting the positive things that you are going to do today to make sure that you bring about those things that we've just mentioned. Happiness for self, for country, and for our world. It's Entrepreneurial Thursday. That's how we like to set your minds to think like an entrepreneur. Now everybody's talking about the fact that it may not be enough to just uh, depend on your salary. And by the way, how much is your salary? So people are thinking outside the box and how to make more money. And you don't have to miss work one day before you can make money nowadays. So long as there is the internet, there is a possibility. You can make some cool cash. So go to the internet, look for courses to do if you have not uh, yet had certification for some of the things that people do remotely get some certification and then begin to do or you just concentrate on uh, marketing and that is a very easy one that you can do whatever you do and you want to have another stream of income let it be a wholesome thing that you are doing to contribute to making your 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 bank account you know become better than it is and put more food on your table times are hard but we are going to go through this we're going to this phase is going to pass like we always say this too shall pass okay so we have some things that are uh, trending for us um, it may not be the most trending but there are things that caught our attention and one of them is that the u.s court has granted orders uh, to release uh, Tinubu's academic record, that is the president of the uh, country, Nigeria. Remember, a United States District Court uh, for the Northern District of Illinois has granted the request filed by the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, that is Atiku Abubakar, uh, that seeks, to, uh, seeks the release of President Bola Tinubu's academic records by the Chicago State University. The judge, Jeffrey Gilbert, a U.S. magistrate, gave the ruling on Tuesday ordering the CSU to produce all relevant and non-privileged documents to Atiku, the plaintiff, within two days. Tinubu's lawyers have argued that their client is not willing to lift his privacy privilege with the ruling also conceding this by using the term non-privileged documents. So Atiku had approached the court seeking an order that will compel the university to release Tinubu's records. And although Tinubu's credentials indicated that he graduated in 1979 with a bachelor's degree in accounting, there have been allegations bordering on discrepancies in the president's certificate. So now that uh, uh, parts of the documents that uh, are supposed to be released have been released, uh, because we are, uh, we are hoping they've been released, uh, the two days have gone by, um, if they have been released, then maybe that matter will be put to rest. But that is a bone of contention. So, so many discrepancies according to uh, the people who are asking for them. Some say uh, even if he graduated from the university, it is someone else that graduated, uh, maybe a female even. Uh, some are saying he didn't even graduate. Well, even though we've heard some stories that the school has come out to say he did graduate, well, we are going to have the uh, certified true copy, if that is the word to use, of uh, those documents that will be tendered in court. But we are keeping our fingers crossed and seeing what is going to happen. Whatever happens, whatever the result of the um, appeal that has been made at the Supreme Court by both the Labour Party and the People's Democratic Party and their presidential candidates, we do hope that the outcome will give Nigeria a better lease of life, that we will, the suffering will, will stop, or even if we're going to suffer, let it be for a short time, and the end 
will give us something to smile about. It's a new Nigeria we want, not just a new government, not just a new person at the helm of affairs, not just everything has to be new. We just want a new Nigeria, a happier Nigeria, a healthier Nigeria, a better Nigeria for ourselves and our kids and our grandchildren that are yet unborn. Okay, so there's also uh, a very, very pathetic uh, thing that happened a few months ago. Remember that uh, a, a doctor on housemanship uh, lost her life in an elevator in a hospital that is supposed to be government owned, or at least is supposed to be overseen by government. Uh, but um, right now, another tragedy happened where a doctor allegedly dies after working 72 consecutive hours in Luth, that is the Lagos University Teaching Hospital. The doctor died in there. And the story is that the death of a, uh, Dr. Umar Michael uh, worked allegedly for 72 hours. And it led to house officers at Lagos State Teaching Hospital to raise the alarm over poor working conditions. Dr. Michael allegedly died on September 17 after being on a 72-hour call in the neurosurgery unit. He was said to have been on call for the duration before arriving home on Sunday morning for church service and slumped in his worship center, United Evangelical Church, at about 11 a.m. In a letter written to the chief medical director uh, of Lutz, Professor Wasiu Lanre at Deyemo, by medical doctors under the ages of the Association of Resident Doctors, R ARD, uh, Lut chapter, they said the late doctor's roommate attested to the fact that the deceased had hardly slept in their apartment for the past one week. They claimed that Dr. Michael was always on call and had returned home after surgeries and other activities in the neurosurgery unit at about 3 a.m. They also mentioned that the long-standing challenges they have faced uh, since uh, resuming their housemanship at the hospital, including bullying from senior colleagues, stressful call hours without breaks in between, no call for food, or, and no good accommodation. Now, in their request, the doctors demanded that house officers who were on call the previous day should be allowed either half day the next day or allowed uh, to resume work by midday the following day and should not be made to work for 48 hours at a stretch. They also demanded that the compulsory health checks at the beginning of house uh, jobs should be free or grossly subsidized for house officers. They further demanded that their senior colleagues, senior registrars, or registrars and uh, registrars should make the work environment friendly for them and house officers should not do the work of porters, nurses, or patient relatives. In uh, its reaction, Lutz Public Relations Officer uh, Omolola Fakeye said it is not true that anybody worked for 72 hours. At the time, he claimed to be awaiting a briefing on Dr. Michael's death and would get the truth from the medical report. Okay, so <clears throat> a lot of things are being thrown up here. Uh, I'm not trying to blame the dead, first of all, but uh, 72 hours and you're still going to church? Would God not understand? Why not use the time to rest? That is not meaning that you, uh, the, anybody is supposed to work like the doctors are demanding for up to 48 hours. Why? But when we ask ourselves these questions, we also remember the fact that a lot of medical practitioners are leaving the country. So in a place where there are supposed to be 10, you probably have only uh, three people working there. That means the workload will be really, really crazy. And in so many offices that I know, people are leaving because the working conditions are no longer favorable. Sometimes it's not the management that is bullying them like they are saying in, uh, the, um, in Lutz, that they are complaining that senior colleagues are bullying them. Maybe it's not just bullying. Maybe even the management doesn't have the money to pay everybody and just, they are just trying. They don't want to lay off anybody, but people up and leave. Sometimes people see remote jobs that they are doing from home because that's the craze nowadays and they have no need to come to the office and so they resign. And in a place where you're seeing, uh, you are supposed to be seeing like 10 people like I mentioned, you are seeing only three. So what do you do? So people are short starved and why is that? So if the government is not deliberate about it, this, there, will be, there might be uh, a lot of other Dr. Michaels that will come up.
because, you know, and like they say in Nigeria, man, no be wood. So if you have somebody working for 72 hours, uh, someone who used to work for eight hours or used to work for six hours, because doctors shouldn't even work for that long because uh, of what they do. So it, imagine a doctor under stress, you know, operating on a patient. This is no neurosurgery, which is a very delicate part of uh, medicine. And someone is standing up and doing what he's doing for 72 hours, even if he comes and goes, but nonstop for 72 hours, that is a full week. So what will the government do about it? What will they, this Luth is a government owned hospital that is Lagos State University Teaching Hospital. So it is owned by the government which means if one person is working 72 hours, it means that they are short-staffed. How can the staff strength be, be boosted? It's to make the working conditions so favorable that the people who are leaving will not leave anymore. So without trading blames, without laying blames at the feet of anybody, we just hope that this kind of a thing will not have to happen again at all anywhere, not just in the medical profession, but in any profession at all. Because uh, once someone is stressed, the work becomes, you know, somehow, <laughs> as we would like to put it. Our hearts go to the family of Michael Umo, and we also pray that uh, uh, his soul finds peace in the bosom of the Lord. Where are you right now? I hope that you are uh, set to go to work if you are not an early bed like some of us are that need to be at the office very early in the morning. But if you have to go anywhere, you know that in Lagos State you have to move early, no matter the fact that um, uh, now the traffic in Lagos State is not as much as it used to be, thanks to whatever we know already. But um, it doesn't mean that you have to be late for work. Let that culture of waking up early and doing what you need to do uh, still be in you. You never know what will, where you will need it tomorrow, uh, when, what will happen someday, and, and then you would, you would just blame yourself that you should have been an early riser. Now there are the trains. Trains are coming from uh, mile two to Marina, and from Marina to mile two. It's just a, a journey of about 30 minutes or less uh, if you are taking a train. So do well to leave your car at home if you are the person that used to take your car. Conserve the fuel and keep it for other days. Maybe you're taking your family to the church on Sunday. Just enter the train, take a BRT bus if you have that opportunity and let our roads not be as clogged as it used to be. Let Lagos breathe. Let Lagos roads breathe <laughs> at some point. Okay, so we thank the government for that. But we ask that the route from Marina to mile two is not the only route that people need to ply. People need to go to Ikeja, people need to go to Ojodubega, people need to go to uh, Badagri, people need to go to um, many other places. So if the train cannot get to those places, let the buses uh, be able to get to those places. For instance, you get to mile two, you cannot get to Badagri with a BRT bus uh, because they don't go that far. I think they end at mile two. It should be, there should be some provision that will take you anywhere in Lagos so long as you have your carry card, you know that you are fulfilled. You don't even need to carry transport fare inside your wallet because you have a carry card that you have loaded and that should be enough for you to move around in Lagos, whether you're taking the train or you're taking the bus. So the traffic situation is improving and we're hoping that it will improve even more, especially as we know that government-owned transport services, the trains, the BRTs, are a bit more pocket friendly than every other one. And also let the working hours for these things be extended. The train goes uh, for a longer period than the buses. Uh, why can't the buses go for as long as that, at least till eight or nine o'clock in the night so that people can get to wherever they want to get to. But you know, we're just suggesting those kind of things and we hope that the, the authorities will look into it. We'll take a short break. We have a lot on the newspapers to talk about. And when we return, we hope to be joined by architect Ezekiel Nyai Tok, a public affairs analyst, too, who will help us to make sense of some of these headlines. Stay with us.